Hello, my name is Gareth. You're watching the Hub Online Network. I'm sorry for the uh, change of scenery today. I forgot my... Oh, I'm also not in the camera. Mwah. Um, yeah, again, sorry for the change of scenery today. I forgot my power cord for my laptop, so uh, it died. And so I had to... I didn't want to bring the big computer over to the little desk. Uh, so I thought it might be easier to just sort of set up like this. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. And... Uh, Happy Monday. Okay. Um, so we got a lot of stuff to go through today, but of course uh, we need to talk about, and again, I'm sorry I'm not facing directly on the camera. Uh, there's a lot of equipment right in front of me here. Um, so... What we should talk about first is, I want to start the show with a moment of silence for what happened in Nova Scotia. Um, so let's start that now. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the numbers here. So worldwide, uh, the numbers have jumped quite a bit since Thursday last week. So we're now sitting at 2,474,698 cases uh, with 40,972 uh, critical cases around the world with 169,758 deceased in total. Um, and of those 2,474,698 cases, 1,649,750 of those are active, which means that we have a recovery of 654,326, uh, which um, is a large number in itself. So if you have recovered, I hope that you are feeling better. Uh, if you're watching, please give me a call at 778-694-4662. I still haven't gotten my personal phone uh, fixed yet, uh, so we'll have to, we're still working off the work phone. Um, so how does that translate into BC? Uh, so we have, so they gave two numbers today um, because they did an update on Saturday and an update today. So um, on Saturday to Sunday, they had a jump of 29 cases, and from Sunday to today, there's another jump of 23 cases, which brings our total to 1,699 across BC. Um, so in the interior, we have 153 cases in total. Uh, there are five additional deaths, again, over the last two days, bringing our total to 86. Uh, there are... Uh, 49, so there's 104 people in hospital, and 49 of those are in ICU. Uh, but in BC, we also have had 1,039 people recover. So again, if you're watching this and you are a recovered person, I hope that you're feeling better. Uh, and we do have a... <clears throat> Let me bring this up here if I can find it. Uh, shoot. Uh, yes, so um, there is a camp in northern Alberta that is showing cases of COVID. And so what's been going on is people have been going from this camp uh, mainly to the interior of British Columbia and to other provinces. Uh, but Bonnie Henry is stating that there are people going from this camp to the interior. So if you are in the Coral Lake uh, camp and you've been going back and forth, please... Uh, keep in mind that you need to self-isolate. Uh, here it is. Alberta outbreak may affect workers and in interior health. Um, so, what's the name of this place? Uh, Cur Curl Lake Oil Sands Project, north of Fort McMurray. Um, to date, 12 people, this is from the other day. I think there's 17 people now. Um, have con connected with this work camp and have uh, tested positive for COVID-19. So there is an outbreak in this in Northern Alberta. Um, so again, if you have come in contact with someone that works in this place, or if you're from this place and you've been working there, 
uh, please self-isolate for the 14 days. Uh, so then, let me talk about what I did on the weekend, just so it's not so all doom and gloom. So those are the numbers. Uh, so, But my weekend started out with, so as everybody knows, last Friday I went down to the coast uh, to have an eye appointment. Um, I do not like going down there, especially in these times. But you got to do what you got to do. So we got up really early and uh, we, went, we went down to the coast. Um, um, unfortunately, they had to do an ultrasound. So they didn't have to do a surgery, thankfully, but they did have to do an ultrasound on my eye. Uh, so it made my appointment go a little bit longer. So while we were down there, um, I did the initial eye appointment. Then we had about two and a half hours to kill. So we happened to be in an area where my wife and I used to live when we had first met. So we went down, sort of down memory lane, um, and we drove up and down King George Boulevard. We used to live in Surrey. And what's interesting is all the places I used to work uh, are different. Um, and it, it was very difficult to find them, surprisingly. Um, hello, David. Thank you for watching. If you want to call in with an update on the doctors, please do so. Uh, new, new phone number, please check that out on the screen there. Um, so... Anyway, what was mainly interesting is we drove past the Costco on King George Boulevard and there was a huge, and I mean huge, uh, lineup. Am I turned down here? Huge lineup. Um, it went from the main door down the side of the building, down the back of the building, and then was like a uh, carnival ride. So the, the line snaked very much like a theme park. And there was probably, ooh, I'd want to say... 500 people at least 500 people in the line it was crazy we drove past it and we're, we're like oh god thank thankfully we don't have to be in that um but so it was crazy down at the coast every grocery store was like that i mean costco was more like that but lot, several grocery stores had a big line um so that was very interesting and if you have any stories about shopping and just in camloops i would imagine uh, email us at hon at ashcrofthub.com and or message my network oh hi Gareth. david here hey david how you doing i'm doing good wonderful what's new and exciting well i think i think there was a, a fairly good update today uh i i noticed a couple of things that both dr henry and uh adrian dix uh commented on and that's the fact that uh and you were just commenting on this as well that there are a lot of healthcare things other than COVID 19 that are still going very very well and so uh you know People should be checking with their doctor about their regular things and uh, uh, having their regular appointments. Now, that they will start off by being a telephone call or, or a video conference, but uh, they, they will have that. And if the doctor does need to see you, they will arrange arrange that. So those things are, are, are going really, really well. And uh, uh, there, there still is a lot of health care happening. Right. Well, I, I know that they did a big update about uh, the province in general and how they're going to be adding to the rural um, health care uh, infrastructure. Did you follow that at all today? Uh, yes, and uh, that, that, that is, is, is very, very exciting because all of the committees that I'm, I'm on are, are, have been working on that, trying to uh, bring that to the fore and uh, uh, finally getting an acknowledgement uh, about the, the fact that the distances that we have to deal with in the rural areas are crucial to uh, being able to provide health care. And this is a, a really great first step towards some some equity in rural health care and I'm, I'm really pleased to, to to see that started and you know we now have to see it roll out and actually work but uh, uh, you know it, it was a, a very welcome commitment um, so just for the viewers that are watching can you just explain a little bit as to um, a who you are and how you're involved with the, with the health care Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, with, with an organization called Patient Voices Network, and uh, 
the healthcare in British Columbia, and of course a lot of other things as well, but primarily in healthcare, uh, they are trying to make sure that all of the all of the people are at the table. So if they're making healthcare decisions, they are wanting to make sure that patients are at the table. So as a patient partner, I sit on uh, the rural. Um, uh, transportation, the provincial rural transportation working group, and this is made up of the transportation leads from each of the health authorities, and from the Ministry of Health, and from the BC Ambulance Service, and uh, we've been working for about four years now on. Uh, identifying the, the, the bottlenecks and challenges and and trying to resolve those and coming up with solutions. So uh, this is why today's uh, announcement was very exciting for me. Uh, I also, uh, we're in the process and, you know, it has been sort of, it, the work on this has been slowed down, but we're moving towards what is known as primary care uh, for uh, uh, the whole province, not just for rural areas. But in rural areas, uh, primary care networks are going to be an incredible step forward because it will allow us to locally uh, administer and control and 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 deal with the the personnel that are needed in order to provide in community care. So we will be using. The, the healthcare professionals so that there is in community care in communities like Clinton, there are, is communi in community care on the First Nations reserves. And by sharing that and, and working the personnel around those places, we'll be able to uh, assure that there's m more access to care more locally everywhere in our catchment area. Right. Oh, right on. Thank you for that uh, description. I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, are there any updates from our, our local doctors? Uh, they're they're doing fairly well. Again, uh, you know, if you know, this is a time when if you don't have a doctor, it's a good time to register for one. Uh, if you, uh, they will have an, an initial uh, con consult with the the patient uh, over the phone or over the video conferencing, and then they will most likely arrange for uh, an in person visit in order to be able to get you properly registered and get to know you and things like that. So, uh, you know, this is a really great time to do that. The other thing is we move to primary care, the more patients we have registered at the clinic, the more resources we're going to be able to request from the province because healthcare funding is based on, on, on numbers of patients. And so if we could get everybody in our catchment area registered either at, at one of the First Nations clinics or at the clinic in Clinton or, or the clinic here in Ashcroft, uh, we'll be in a much stronger position to be able to move that forward come the fall when we're able to start meeting and putting those uh, those plans together. Right. Well, excellent. Well, I, I'm I'm hoping that that is I'm hoping that everybody will start registering because I'm not thinking we're going to be wanting to travel too much to see doctors. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's and, and there's there's a, a, a large portion of, of people in our community and our catchment area that have been traveling to Kamloops or, or Hundred Mile House or or uh, Merritt or or Chilliwack to 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 see doctors and. Uh, if you're going to register at the clinic here, you do not have to give up that connection at this point in time. What you what you just need to do is make sure you're registered here so that we know that you're living here and, and, and working with us. Right. Oh, well, that sounds pretty easy. I think it is. <laughs> I haven't seen the forms yet, so if somebody goes through it, if they could call me and tell me how well it worked or didn't work, then we'll make sure it works better. Okay. Well, that being said, if, if there's people out there watching and you fill out the form and you can't get a hold of David, you can get a hold of us and we can get a hold of David. Um, so again, email hon at ashcofthub.com and we will get you guys hooked up together. Great. Thank you, uh, Gareth, and I, I really appreciate
appreciate your help. I, I, if I may, I'd like to just put in a, a, a little uh, thing and thank all the people who have been uh, watching the uh, St. Albans Sunday services, and uh, 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 that's been really a blessing for us to, to be able to, to know that that's uh, been a blessing to the community. And again, if, if they're enjoying that and appreciating that, they could let St. Albans know. We really appreciate uh, your help in allowing us to continue to give some spiritual support to the community. Oh, well, I do what I can. Anyway, thank you very much for calling in, and um, we'll talk to you, if not at the end of the week, next week. Okay, that right. sounds great. Wait right on, right, David. Thanks very much. Thanks. So that was David Dirksen, a uh, local Ashcroft citizen, uh, talking about an update from the hosp uh, or interior health and our local doctors. Um, so just to get back to what I was doing on the weekend here, again, I was down in Surrey, uh, got my eye injections, so that's all good. Um, the only thing that, the only thing is, when you have these eye injections, it really dries out your eyes, makes them really gritty. Uh, so I didn't want to do very much. So what we did end up doing was, uh, we watched six episodes of a TV show called Waco. Um, my, my wife found it on Netflix. Very interesting. It's about a, uh, in 1993, there was a, uh, for lack of a better term, there was a cult um, in Waco, Texas, who get sieged by the FBI, and it is the longest siege on American soil in FBI, or in, I guess, American history. Um, very interesting. It's only six episodes long, so if you like that sort of thing, uh, you know, sort of true story drama, check that out and let me know what you think. Um, the other thing that we did was, and I have a picture of it here, we worked on our, oh, hang on, let's get rid of my name here. We worked more on our garden, and you know what, I'm going to just see if I can't make that a little bit bigger. Um, no, I can't. So what we did was we uh, added the fence, the, the, the fence line, or the, the rail uh, line, and today and this week we're going to add the fence. So... Um, yeah, so that was, that was very busy for my wife and I, you know, trying to keep busy in these times of uncertainty. Uh, I also made two loaves of bread for the first time, so thank you, Deb Tui, for hooking me up with uh, flour and yeast for that. Um, what else did we do? Yeah, so that was pretty much my weekend, and now here I am, back at the Hub Online Network. So yeah, let us know what you, how your weekend went, and uh, we would love to, to hear from you guys, of course. Um, we did... Oh, so the other thing I should mention right now is we have a poll going on. So the poll is we're looking at possibly changing our uh, uh, programming schedule. So right now we do every day of the week. And for this week, I'm going to continue to do every day until we do our end of the week uh, official launch party, which is happening Friday this week. Um, but... If you would like us to either stay at five days a week at the same time or Monday and Friday, uh, there is a poll on our Facebook page that you can participate in. Right now, it's looking like it's going to two days a week. And what that really means is it's not that we're only going to be making content on Monday and Friday. There's still going to be content all week long. It's just on Mon Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that content changes a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to explain a little bit as to what my job is. Uh, I talked about this a little bit last week, but I didn't go into too much detail. So I work, uh, of course, for the Hub, uh, but we get funding through a group called Cactus Media, which gets funding through the federal government. So, and the way that that job works is I have, I personally have to produce at least, or on average, two hours of civically minded uh content. Uh, so that means talking about uh, the, you know, the school board or uh, councils, um, courthouses, all, the, all things that are federally funded uh, or provincially funded. And um, I need to make two hours of content on that type of uh, material specifically. That's why you're seeing uh, lots of interviews with council members and the MP or, or, uh, or our MLA. Um, but we have had requests from people to start doing more because we used to do interviews with artists and uh, musicians and that sort of thing. Uh, so we have had a, a request to do those types of interviews again. Um, and 
Now I don't have it here, unfortunately. I was hoping to, to download it and be able to show you guys, but for some reason it didn't work. Uh, so I was going to play a, a clip from one of our previous videos with an interview with Joe Petty at Desert Days, which I'm gonna talk about Desert Days a little bit more here in a second, because uh, there is some news out of that. Um, but anyway, so we have had this request, and so if I can pump out my two hours of material that I have to do, that means that we can start doing those more uh, artsy types of interviews. So that would be something that would go into the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday slot. So that's what those choices really mean. It's not that the content is not going to be made, it's just it's going to change a little bit. Um, so anyway, um, we talked about that, we talked about that. So we have an update from the Equality Project. So it says, hi Gareth and to all the listeners. Another week in isolation has gone by and it's beginning to show it's beginning to show people getting discouraged. Please remember the people who are most vulnerable in many ways uh, to keep a positive attitude, to stick with what we've been asked to do, to not get into more activities that harm themselves and others, to not give up on whether they can make it in living this make it in living this life. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers. Thank you for so many of you who give so generously, we could not exist without your support and encouragement from the Equality Project. And yes, the Equality Project is in Cache Creek. Um, they are always looking for donations of, because uh, they, what they do is they make uh, meals for uh, people in need. Um, they also have, not a thrift store, but they have a, a section where people can go and get clothes, uh, certain types of furniture, cookware, that kind of thing, really help them get off their feet a little bit. Um, toiletries, that sort of stuff. So if you're capable of, de of donating to the Equality Project, check out their Facebook page um, and you'll be able to get hooked up with them and find a way to either help financially or help with donations of goods. And that also goes for uh, Soups On, which is hosted by St. Albans and Ashcroft and the Elizabeth Fry Society, who uh, give support people with counseling services and they ha they also run the food bank in Ashcroft. Um, now a couple things that have been uh, canceled or postponed so for this summer Skip's run has been postponed as of this time and we have a uh, of an update from let me find it here where is it Um, uh, sorry, sorry, I had it up, but it's gone. Here it is. Okay, so press release from Desert Days. So in light of the ongoing global, global COVID-19 pandemic, the recent announcement by BC Provincial Medical Officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, is that there will not be permitted any mass gatherings for any cultural and sporting events this summer. So the Desert Days Music Festival team have sadly made the difficult but absolutely necessary decision to cancel the 2020 Desert Days Music Festival. We do not make, take, make this decision lightly, but do so within, uh, with the continued health safety of our volunteers, musicians, artists, and artisans, merchants, vendors, and patrons foremost in our minds. It has been the ongoing... Um, and has been the ongoing the support of these people and our Desert Days family over the past 10 years that has made Desert Days the best little fest in the West and an annual event that uh, we all look forward to every summer and one, of, one that we can justify uh, to be proud of. Now, that being said, just because uh, Desert Days is cancelled does not mean that that has to be the end of Desert Days this year. I have been in talks with Jan Schmidt, um, a previous... Uh, employee of the Hub Online Network and is the man that also runs the Desert Days, uh, what is his, his official titer, title? Um, he is the director and organizing committee of Desert Days Music Festival. So what him and I have talked about is possibly doing a uh, collaboration by talking to some musicians and getting, uh, you know, in, in a physically distancing way, uh, filming them doing some sets and being able to have still a Desert Days weekend just virtually uh, and probably filmed in advance. So stay tuned for that and I look forward to talking to Jen more in depth about how we're going to be able to um, make that happen. Uh, what else do I have? <clears throat> um, 
So, the province of PC is keeping flood watches in place for a large portion of BC interior and has instituted ward warnings further north. Uh, according to an update issued at 9 a.m. on Monday, April 20th, the Nazco and West Road River areas are now subjects to flood warnings with the BC River Forecast Center saying waterways in that area are running at a 20-year flow rate. Uh, so this is a 20-year high water um, event. So flood watches are in place for the Caribou and Chilcotin regions, including the communities of Prince George, Williams Lake, Quinnell, Alexis Creek, Anna, Anaheim Lake, and Cache Creek. Yes, Cache Creek. Uh, provincial officials say the Bonaparte River below Cache Creek is flowing at a two-year to five-year rate and on the rise. The update notes Monday is expected to be of the warmest day of the week, meaning stream flows may rise today in similar uh, trip obituaries and creeks so that being said um, and I think that I have it here yes so last week Barbara Roden did an interview with the mayor of Cash Creek Santo Tallarico and he says that sandbags are available at the north end of the Cash Creek sorry uh, the village of Cash Creek is also looking ahead at flood season. Mayor Santo Tallarico says that steps have already been taken in order to ensure that the community and its residents are prepared. Sandbags are available at the north end of the Cash Creek Park, says Tallarico. Some bags have already been filled by members of the Cash Creek Volunteer Fire Department and have been stockpiled for those who need them. And residents are also able to go to the park and fill bags for personal use with bags and sand available. It's a good idea for people to choose to think proactively. The village has also stockpiled riprap so that it's available at short notice. It means that we have access to it quickly instead of having to go to an outside source if it's needed. In the middle of the night, it can be difficult to get access to material. We are ready for what the weather brings. Now, I can say that on Saturday night, we had a little bit of an issue in the Sage and Sands Mobile Home Park. So several of us were up and out and about um, until about 11, 11.30 that night. And there were trucks going in and out because of the uh, far end of the Sage and Sands Mobile Home Park is the water treatment plant. And that's where they have stockpiled a lot of the riprap that he has mentioned in that interview with Barbara Roden. And if you want to read the rest of that story, go to uh, Barbara Roden's Facebook, uh, sorry, the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal's Facebook page or website. You can find the whole thing there. That's just the bit about uh, the sandbagging and getting prepared for flooding that I read. So thank you, Barbara, for having that interview with him so that I could read that. Uh, but anyway, getting back to Saturday, there were trucks coming in and out of the park, loading up with riprap and going out to put it down. So there, to my knowledge, Quartz Road by the fire hall has been shut down. They are rip wrapping that area. They're rip wrapping places in uh, Back Valley Road in Cache Creek. Um, so there's lots of work being proactively done uh, by uh, Cache Creek. So, but yes, if you are on the uh, water line, like my family is at Sage and Sands, or if you're in the uh, mobile home park by the post office, it's probably in your best interest to uh, sandbag now before it gets bad because again, we're looking at a 20 year high water mark. And if 2017, 2018 was any indication of what we could be looking at, this could be a bad year. So get on it. And now that being said, there is also a, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. <clears throat> so um, as of yesterday, there is an evacuation alert that has been issued by the village of Cash Creek due to potential flooding. Because of the potential danger to life and health, the village of Cash Creek has issued an evacuation alert for all low-lying properties in the vicinity of Cash Creek from Quartz Road to the eastern boundary of the village of Cash Creek. An evacuation alert has been issued to prepare you to evacuate your premises or property. Should it be found necessary, residents will be given as much, adv as much advanced notice as possible prior to evacuation. However, you may receive limited notice due to changing conditions. What you should do is locate all family members and designate a meeting area outside of the evacuation area should an evacuation order be called while separated. Uh, pack essential items such as government issued ID, medication, eyeglasses, valuable papers such as insurance, credit and mortgage information, immediate care needs for uh, 
dependence, and, if time and space permits, keepsakes for quick departure. Prepare to move disabled persons, children, and or neighbors if assistance is needed. Prepare to take pets with you and move livestock to safe area. Arrange transportation for all your household members. Fill the gas tank of personal vehicles if transportation assistance is needed. Call, there's no actual contact number. Um, arrange accommodation for all members of the residents if possible. Wait for an evacuation order to be issued before evacuating. And monitor www.cashcreek.ca for more information. Uh, and, further, more, and further information will be issued as needed. So, if you're in Cache Creek in a low-lying area, please be prepared to evacuate according to the Cache Creek Village office. Now, um, so going back to talking to... So those are the big things happening in our area right now. Um, so again, Skip's Run is, is postponed. Uh, Desert Days is canceled. Uh, flood warning for Cache Creek and potential evacuation warning for Cache Creek. Um, now there is, going back to COVID-19 related material, uh, a new collaborative framework will help ensure people living in rural, remote and indigenous communities in BC have access to critical health care that they can count on to meet their unique needs during the COVID-19 pandemic and into the future. So this is something that David had touched on when he phoned in, uh, but this is a little bit more in depth um, talking to, uh, based off of what John Horgan said this afternoon. Um, so, this framework outlines immediate actions to improve the healthcare services and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic, including improved medical transportation options to larger centers, including flight and ambulance. So what they've done is they've added to the interior health area and to the northern health area, 55 new ambulances and 55 new modes of air transit. So that means planes and or helicopters, so 55 of each. Um, housing options for people looking to self-isolate near their families while remaining in their home communities. Um, so they're looking at p setting people up in uh, hotels. Uh, culturally safe contact tracing that, re that respects privacy in small communities. They made a big um, uh, speech about uh, being inclusive for indigenous communities, which is fantastic. Uh, so um, that's mainly talking about that. So they want to be culturally respective uh, as they go through and they test people. Um, access the virtual doctors of the day, a program that connects First Nation members and their families in remote communities to a doctor or nurse practitioner using video conferencing. Um, options for accommodations near large centers with more medical services and increased mental health supports in communities. Uh, so local leadership will determine how these services operate in their communities with the priority being to ensure residents can make informed choices about how they receive care. So that is huge. Um, I know in our area specifically we have been fighting with, not fighting, that's a bad way to put it, uh, in talks with Interior Health about how we can uh, make our own health site in Ashcroft um, a bit more robust. And this is some ways that I think that they were looking at before COVID-19. And now that COVID-19 has happened, it's really pushed this into the limelight. So some good things can come out of these pandemics. Uh, what's that saying? Never let a good pandemic go to waste. Um, so anyway, right now at the Hub Online Network, if you're interested, you can hook up yourself with the Hub Online Network Community Scavenger Hunt. Uh, so there's several different places that you can go. Uh, we're looking for you to take pictures, some short videos, uh, send them in to us. Uh, again, to either send it into hon at ashcrofthub.com. Probably the best way to do that, if possible, is to use Google Drive. Send us the link. And then on Friday, when we do our launch party, we're going to uh, take all of these little videos and uh, use them uh, to make that show among some other things that we're working on. So uh, that is our scavenger hunt. So please take advantage of that. Um, and if you are in need, please call 250-457-3422. This number will get you in touch with the Ashcroft Cash Creek Helpline. This will get you uh, food services and deliveries, prescription drop-offs, mail pickups, um, spiritual support, if you're at home and you have nobody to talk to, 
this is a line that you can call just to talk to somebody. Um, this line will, this phone number will get you in touch with uh, the appropriate people in Equality Project, Elizabeth Fry, uh, and Soup's On if you need food. Uh, there's, there's volunteers that will go to the grocery store for you and uh, help you out with that. So if you need anything, call this number. There's lots of people waiting and standing by just to help you out. Um, and also remember that in this difficult time, you are not alone. If you are uh, looking, if you're feeling like you are trapped alone, you are not. Uh, please call 1-800-SUICIDE. Uh, um, if that is something that you are contemplating, we there's there's hopefully no no reason for that to happen um, because there are people out there that are willing to help you out. Uh, so please, you don't need to go through this alone. There's lots of help out there for you. And if you're watching right now, just coming online, give me a call at 778-694-4662, and we will give and we'll chat with you right now. Um, now, the other thing, another main thing that has happened, I've done all that stuff. Another thing that has happened over the last day is, and this is interesting, the oil price in the US has dropped to negative $37 a barrel. So what's happening is the oil company would <laughs> technically have to pay you $37 to take a barrel of oil. Uh, so they have produced so much over the last while that they are stockpiling so much they have nowhere to put it. So the price has dropped. It's has, this has never happened. Uh, it's quite the thing right now. Um, but I'm not sure, I, I'm just this sort of, I just read about this before I went online uh, on the show today. So I don't know exactly how this affects Canada, if it affects Canada. Um, so I'll look into that a little bit more for tomorrow, but this is a big story happening right now and it's crazy. I almost want to get my $37 and a barrel of oil just to say that I did it. But, um, yeah, anyway, maybe Anne, uh, Anne McKegg, if you're watching, um, if you could chat with me, you don't have to call me on, on the show, but if you could give me a call and we can talk about this, maybe you have some insights and, uh, we can we can discuss that. Uh, you'd probably be the, my best bet. So the other thing that's going to possibly happen this summer is um, despite the fact that there's floods, we're also looking at a big year for uh, wildfires. Now, there have already been several wild, wildfires in our area. Uh, there was one, I'm not sure if it's controlled yet, but there was one in Squamish last week. There has been a few in Lytton. There's been a couple sort of outside of Cache Creek um, nothing too major yet, but the fact is, is that they're happening. So, uh, some ways that you can prepare for a wildfire. Uh, you can create a 10 meter defensible space around your property. Um, you can mark your roof fire resistant and clear away gutter debris. Uh, wood shingles are extremely flammable, so roof constructed from non-flammable materials such as asphalt, metal, slate, or tile offer the best possible protection against fire. Um, other things you can do is keep embers out by opening and any opening can allow sparks and embers to enter your property. Uh, so precautions including screening vents uh, with wire mesh protecting eaves and that sort of thing uh, can protect your house from embers coming in. Uh, you can uh, prune your trees. So cedar trees go up like that, uh, especially if they are dead. So prune especially your cedar trees. Um, if they're dead, take them out and that will help protect your property. Keep your lawn mowed. Uh, grass shorter than 10 centimeters is, has a much lower fire risk. Create a bug out bag and action evacuation plan. Um, so that's always a good plan, especially if you lived through the 2017 wildfires in Cache Creek and Ashcroft. Not so much Ashcroft, they weren't uh, evacuated, um, but if you were lived in Cache Creek, you know what being evacuated is all about. Um, as, as well as several other uh, districts in the area. So have a bug out bag, have a plan. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait for the country, not the country, the province, the municipalities, if you know that it's coming. Um, make a, so, so make a plan, work with your neighbors, work with your family, physically distancing, mind you. Um, but those are just some ways that you can um, uh, 
save yourself from a possible fire at your home if a wildfire were to happen. Now I do have, yes, so this is huge. So Annie's Pizza, uh, last, not Annie's Pizza, Annie's, uh, so Annie, her house, who owns Annie's Pizza, burnt down last week. Um, and there has been a huge uh, community response to this. So Robert Stanhope organized a fundraiser on GoFundMe.com. And they have, in one week, less than a week, I guess, have raised $10,000 uh, to help Annie and her husband get on her feet. Um, so that is amazing. Thank everybody so much in Cash Creek for doing this. Uh, thank you, Robert, for doing this. Uh, that is awesome. Um, I'm very sorry that Annie's, I'm very sorry, Annie, that your house burnt down. I'm sorry that you lost your pet. Uh, that is awful. But this is amazing. Uh, just the sheer amount of, uh, this is just very hopeful. I don't even know what to say. Uh, anyway, I digress. Um, so that is fantastic. Again, thank you, Robert Stanhope, for setting that up. Um, now, we have a lot of local businesses in Ashcroft and Cash Creek. Um, some are out there for you to see, like the bakery, Unity, of course, the grocery store, the gas stations, all that kind of stuff. But there are businesses such as just uh, Crush Dance or Zumba or um, any anything of that, that, that nature. So what's been going on is there's been lots of Zoom, uh, so over the internet classes, karate class, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, over the next couple of days, we're coming up with a plan and to make some videos as to how you can get involved with all of these different groups. And there's also some, and again, this is uh, suggestions put out by Barbara Roden. So thank you, Barbara, for that. Um, but here are some suggestions as to, without going into too many details, uh, and you can see all this on Barbara Roden's Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal Facebook page, about other ways that you can help support local businesses. So you can buy a gift card for later. You can uh, skip the refund and take a rain check. Um, if so, if you already bought something and you it's not getting to you fast enough or something along those lines, don't take the refund. Just make sure that you can get it later. Uh, so you can commit to future work. You can shop locally online. You can look for virtual classes, like I mentioned, the Zoom classes with all those different dancing groups and karate. Uh, you can get takeout or delivery. Uh, you can write an online review. That's always positive for people in our local area. Uh, you can like and share people on social media. And you can tell your businesses that you appreciate their work in this time. Uh, whether they're open or closed, people still like to hear that they had done a good job or are doing a good job. So stay positive. That's awesome. There's, again, a whole list with more details uh, on the Ashcroft Cash Creek uh, Journal Facebook page. So check that out. Uh, what else do I have here to go through today? <clears throat> that's that, that's that. So that's pretty much what I have today. Um, yes. So again, we're going to be doing this show every day for the rest of the week uh, with our big uh, launch party on Friday, probably after the 4 o'clock show, so around 6-ish on Friday night. Uh, so if you'd like to participate in that, keep that on your calendar. We're going to be showing some videos that we've made. Uh, some videos that uh, we're hopefully making here soon. We're going to have some montages. We're hoping to have some of the pictures and videos from the scavenger hunt go up. So again, get, get those into us before Friday so we can put them together and uh, have them to put up. And thank you all so much for watching. Uh, stay safe. And we'll see you guys tomorrow at 4. And please, also, if you have any suggestions for us, please, if... So what what's happening is people are sharing these videos and that's fantastic. We love to have people share these videos, but people that comment on those videos, we don't necessarily get to see those comments. So if people are making suggestions, we might not see them. So please send your suggestions to us either uh, by retyping into the comment section of this video or email us at hon at ashcrofthub.com. We want to make these shows for you. Um, and again, if we never see the comments, we don't know that we need to change anything. So please, uh, let's get our, these comments to where they got to go so we can make the best material that we can make for you. And if you have kids at home, uh, Dana has been doing some great uh, storybook readings there. So go and check those out every day at 10. 
um, until the end of the week. And th again, thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow at 4. Stay safe and have a good day.